We all know that billions of shots of COVID-19 have been given worldwide. However, questions remain as to how long does immunity last with these vaccines. So the question in our country is whether a booster shot is needed or not. Which patient population will really need a booster shot and which patient population does not at the present time? So let's watch this. Now, one issue with regard to COVID-19 vaccines, especially in our country where Sinovac is the predominant vaccines given to the general population, continues to be hounded by questions regarding the length of protection it offers specifically, especially with studies suggesting of a particular brand, the Sinovac, where in immunity after two doses of this brand wanes rapidly and the protection offered to some people, specifically elderly, is limited. Recently, the World Health Organization announced an advice from its strategic advisory group of experts on immunization or the SAGE that people over the age of 60 should receive a third dose of the same or another vaccine to ensure sufficient protection. We know that a number of countries have already offered their citizens third doses of all adults or trying to mix and match approaches, but some experts are actually questioning whether inactivated virus, in fact, should continue to be used when all other better options are available. We know that inactivated virus vaccines use killed SARS-CoV-2 virus is one type of vaccine that triggers an immune response against many of the viral proteins. Now, which in contrast to an mRNA or a viral vector vaccine that targets a specific response to a specific spike protein, which is the particular protein of interest since the spike protein is what the virus uses to enter the human cell. This may therefore explain why mRNA vaccines based on studies are considered more potent in terms of immune response than inactivated virus vaccine. Sinovac, which is an inactivated virus vaccine, you therefore cannot choose the target you just throw in all different antigens. But we know based on experience and real world data that there's now approximately 2.4 billion doses of these Sinovac that have been administered in China, but almost 1 billion doses of these Chinese-made vaccines have gone to 110 other countries. And with greater experiences around the globe, comparing it to other vaccines, China's inactivated vaccines initially generate lower levels of neutralizing or virus-blocking antibodies considered as a proxy for protection. And that true enough, these levels quickly drop over time. But everyone should understand that this is the nature of a vaccine response in terms of antibody level, because whatever vaccines you use, you expect these antibody levels to drop over time. It is, however, my recommendation and the recommendation of the World Health not to check your antibody levels that are being offered by commercial labs to check for protection because waning antibodies isn't necessarily the same as waning of immune protection. I have explained this in my previous videos that vaccines induce a complex immune response, including memory B and T cells, which are important in cell-mediated immunity that actually might be more long-lived than just these neutralizing antibodies. One specific study to prove that antibodies are not alone in fighting COVID-19 once we're vaccinated was a study done in Hong Kong. It showed specifically with the use of Sinovac that it was able to induce significantly lower antibody response compared to two doses of mRNA, but when they examined the cell-mediated immunity via T-cell response, you know what they found? 
both vaccines, the inactivated and the mRNA vaccines, elicited comparable response. In another study using healthcare workers in China, they also found that B and T cells specific for SARS-CoV-2 continues to be detected after five months after two doses of the inactivated virus vaccine. It is therefore very important that if you look at studies to assess protection over time with this inactivated virus, for example, the one from Chile, showing that yes, there is a small but significant decline in efficacy against symptomatic disease, but the protection against hospitalization continues to be high, which actually is the ultimate goal why we do get COVID-19 vaccines. Again, it is very important for everyone to remember that you still see breakthrough infections even with mRNA vaccines because all COVID vaccines, whatever technologies you get, will have a similar trend of waning antibodies and protection against, effect, against infection over time. However, there's a specific subgroup where the problem with this waning protection occurs, and that's in elderly. It was shown that the immune system weakens with age and that vaccines are generally less effective in older people. And based on one massive analysis involving 1 million people who were hospitalized with COVID-19 in Brazil, you know what they found? The use of Sinovac offered 60% protection among people elderly up to the age of 79. It was not far from the effect or the protection given by AstraZeneca of around 70%. However, the picture changes dramatically where the protection significantly dropped in people over the age of 80, where Sinovac's protection dropped to 30% effectivity in preventing severe disease and 45% protection against death. Furthermore, as one ages beyond 90, Sinovac only prevented 33% of deaths due to COVID-19. So this is the study, therefore, that prompted calls for third dose among the elderly, specifically among the age of patients above 70, calling for a third dose as protection against death and hospitalization starts to wane off with age. So aside from Brazil, other countries like Chile, Abu Dhabi, in United Arab Emirates, and even China are also now giving booster jobs to their elderly who have received Sinovac or Sinopharm as primary series of vaccination. And true enough, the preliminary results of the effectiveness of booster shots for these groups of population based on data from some 2 million people who have received two shots of Sinovac from Chile and a third shot of either Sinovac, Pfizer, or Oxford AstraZeneca showed that protection against COVID-19 jumped from 56% after two shots to 80% or higher after third shot of any vaccine with protection against hospitalization rising from 84 to 87 percent. We have to remember that this is not for all. We have to remember that our Department of Health is still trying to formulate a plan of elderly and healthcare workers to be given booster shots for those specifically who were given Sinovac as their primary vaccine. We have to wait because most likely it will start within this mid-November. With our cases of COVID-19 also starting to drop, there is really no rush. I believe that I am still protected against hospitalization and severe disease because I am not immunocompromised or haven't reached the elderly age yet. So please stay tuned. Don't rush and decide whether to get those booster shots on your own without any recommendation from our Department of Health. At this time, we know that data on vaccine effectiveness will continue to evolve. It is not yet clear how long the protection will last and how these antibody levels translate to actual protection. But mixing of vaccines, boosting immunity based on real-world data do have its merit. It is very important for us to be clear that for all vaccines, it is very much an evolving situation. And that's true enough, the availability of these inactivated vaccines like Sinovac formed 
a big part of our vaccine portfolio that has protected majority of us from, from hospitalization and death during the height of this pandemic. I hope this video helps in making you understand whether you need a booster shot or not, whether you have to be in a hurry to get these booster shots or not, or whether we should wait for the proper legal way of getting booster shots from the Department of Health. With that, thank you very much and see you again soon.